What's up and welcome back to the channel. In this episode we've got a spec Miata that's got a little bit of damage, so stay tuned. So this thing took a little impact to this side over here. I think the tie right in was bent, but he's already replaced it to make it a roller. But we're going to be replacing this front crossbar here, this metal piece. And we're going to be repairing this apron, and we're going to try to repair this core support here. But we might have to put one of those in, but got to, I think we're going to try to repair this hood as well. He brought me some parts. We're going to be replacing this fender, the other fender, and this door, because he brought me all the parts that are already pre-painted. So the bumper's pre-painted, the door, and I've got two fenders. Now, we are going to be putting two brand new OEM pieces in. This is that cross member with the little end caps. So we've already got it up on the frame machine, so let's go ahead and start taking this thing apart. Dang, that was fast. All right, so let's start hanging on some of these new parts that he brought us and see how well they fit. Losing time, I'm fading fast. I just want to make it last. Try to let go of the past. I close my eyes, embrace the blast. Sleepless nights and headaches stack. Restlessness to hell and back. What's my purpose? What do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack. And sometimes you just gotta believe there's something that'll give you relief. All right, so we've got our parts test fit on the car. We've also got this new cross member piece here we need to get fit on the car. So let's go ahead and get the old one cut off using our thick grinding wheel. All right, so we've got our cross member test fit on the car and that tells us where our apron needs to be. So now we can start pulling on the apron. We can also start hammering and dialing it. We were able to massage the corner of this hood up with a block of wood and a rubber mallet. It still has a little bit of a crease here, but it fits the fender pretty well. And at this point, I really don't even need to paint the hood. So I'm going to talk with the customer, see what he wants to do. We'll probably just end up touching up these chips and call it good enough. All right, so we've got the new part set on here and we've got everything kind of lined out as best we can, but we're running into an issue. You see how the, the hood here is a little bit longer than the fender? Like this here? which basically means that the hood is sitting forward in the car. But if we move the hood back, it's going to tighten up this gap. It's going to open up that gap and it's going to tighten up that corner gap. It's going to actually make the hood sit in here crooked. So what this is indicative of is the front end being pushed over or swung. Um, and at initial glance, you didn't look like any of that would be possible. But once you start hanging parts, it really shows everything. So we'll get some under hood measurements just to verify what we think is going on. But, if uh, you ever run into a problem like this where your hood doesn't want to fit and you have to turn the hood at caddy corner into the car to make it fit and the gaps are all funny because of it, it's probably because the front end is either swung one way or the other.
So we got our top underhood measurements and we measured this thing out and it's exactly like we thought. It's not square. So the front end is that way and it needs to come over this way. Not very much, just a little bit, just enough that would throw off all the gaps. So we're going to get this thing set up on clamps and while it's up on clamps, we'll get the measurements on the bottom side of the car to make sure that they coincide with what we're seeing up top and then we'll start pulling this thing. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay, I move on each and every day The past is where it stays, way back a year ago I've changed for the better this time I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright And for the first time in a long time I'm alright I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same as they were a year ago Alright, so we measured the bottom of this thing and it does coincide with the top. It is pushed that way, so we're going to get this thing pulled over. We've got the two frame rails attached to each other with this chain so we can pull them both at the same time. And we're going to uh, put this pipe basically up in the frame rail. Grab a hold of with this chain here to try to get this thing pulled over. Way back a year ago. All right, so we measured the top and we measured the bottom. Everything is good. The hood fits the car much better. And for any of those of you who are wondering, this pipe is frame machine certified. Certified to come out and knock your teeth out. Life holding me back no more. I've seen a lot of change. Been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But I'll be okay. I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays. Way back a year ago. All right, so we've got this thing all bolted together, test fit. Everything looks really good. All the gaps look good. Yeah, pretty happy with the way everything bolted up. We've also measured everything, so the next step is to get this thing taken all back apart so we can get the cross member welded in, and then we can start cleaning up this apron area and getting it painted. All right, we've got the new cross member welded in. We're going to clean up these welds. We're also going to clean up this area here, the apron area and this lower core support. And then we can get some silver paint on that, the cross member, and also this new end cap. So all the welds look pretty good on this, and none of these are going to interfere with the way the cap bolts on. So I don't really need to take a grinder and make them flat or anything. I'm just going to basically take a red pad like this and try to feather out, smooth up the... Uh, the burnt edges from where the weld was but yeah once I do that I think that's good enough and we'll get this thing painted silver I'm also going to take some solvent on a rag and try to get some of this glue residue from the stickers off so the solvent I'm going to be using to clean the glue residue off of this cross member is lacquer thinner. It's the same lacquer thinner I use to clean out my paint guns. I'm going to be applying some to this paper towel and wiping it off. You gotta focus on yourself, on your faith, on your dreams, on your mind, on your health, yeah. You gotta work, never tell, keep your head down, find what you love and excel, yeah. Push and pull and repel any hate. So now we're going to move towards the apron area here. 
And what I'm trying to accomplish is to get all of this flaking paint, this loose paint, sand it away. I might try to put a wire wheel on here and clean it up a little bit. I'm also going to use the lacquer thinner as well to just clean up the dirt. And I'll wipe everything down with some wax and grease remover. And uh, just basically try to make this look a little bit prettier before we start applying silver paint. I'm also going to be using this little 3 inch DA with some 180 grit sandpaper on it. It'll help me uh, get this sanded a little bit faster and um, hopefully do a little bit better of a job than just doing it by hand. So let's get this sanded. Okay, so I've got it sanded pretty well. So now I'm gonna go back over it a little bit better with some uh, with a red Scotch Brite. Try to get any of the dirt residue off, and then I'm, we will blow it off really well, wipe it down, get everything taped up. And the first thing we're gonna be applying to this area because there's a lot of bare metal is some etch primer. So let's get this cleaned up and scuffed up, and yeah, then we can start hanging some paper. So here's another little trick that I like to do sometimes. If, uh, if the area that you're scuffing is uh, an old panel with a lot of dirt or uh, just like grime built up in there and it's tough to get to go away even with lacquer thinner wiping it down, you can take uh, an old red pad and take some wax and grease remover and spray down the red pad with the wax and grease remover and coat the area that you're, that you're cleaning and scuffing and just basically scrub it, use it as a scrub brush and scrub all in the good crevices and all in the... Uh, areas that are tough to get to and get clean and it should clean everything really well and scuff everything at the same time All right, as you can see, we've got it scuffed up pretty well, and all the flaky paint is gone away. We feather edged all of it as best we could. So the next step is to start getting some tape on this thing and some paper, and then uh, we'll start getting some paint on it. So we got everything all taped up. Now we're going to spray some of this self-etching primer on this bare metal on the apron here and the lower core support. So we're going to let this self-etching primer flash off and once it flashes off then we're going to spray on our sealer. Now it's going to be a gray sealer and we're going to apply one coat. We've got our gray sealer sprayed on there. We're going to give it about a 15 minute flash time and then we can apply our color. Now our color is going to consist of a base coat with an additive in it and the additive is going to convert the base coat into an underhood color which the additive is basically a hardener that's going to make the base coat a little bit more durable and it's also going to make it dry with a little bit of a sheen so we don't have to clear it. Now it should take two or three coats of color to get it covered and once we get that on there we should let it dry overnight 
and then we can start putting this car back together. I will run, run away, I don't have to plan it. I can go, change my fate, you won't understand it. All alone, that's okay, people like it, stand them. They don't want me to change, keep me where I'm standing. And I don't want to be where I am. And I want something more, take a chance. So we put three coats of base coat on here. It looks really good. As soon as everything dries, we'll get this thing untaped and start putting it back together. All right, so we've got this thing all put back together. Let's get this thing off the clamps and get it off the frame machine and get it cleaned up. The five second rule doesn't apply when you got a two second dog. <laughs> All right, so that's going to be about it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. See you.